Good morning. I would like to start the special session for in three links. The session title is a Material Cycle in Construction Works. This special session it has been organized by Japan Society of Material Cycles of Waste Management. I'm Atoru Inui from Osaka University, and also I'm acting as an editor of the Journal of Material Cycle and Waste Management. This is the scope of this special session. The Journal of Material Cycle and Waste Management, which is published by Japanese Society and Korean Society. This journal is currently running a special issue entitled Material Cycles in Construction Works. The objectives is to explore the contributions of construction industry to solutions and prescriptions from technical, political, and environmental aspect for the uh, material cycle uh, uh, and waste management. As you know, construction industry generates about 20% of industrial waste in Japan. And also, construction is a one of the most consuming industries. But a uh, construction industry has made significant efforts in using waste, residues, and byproducts generated from agricultural and other industries, as well as construction industries, by replacing virgin raw materials in concrete geomaterials and other construction materials. In this session, uh, we collaborate the, this special issue in the journal, and we would like to introduce latest and innovative achievement from selected papers submitted to this special issue. And also, we would like to give a comprehensive review on Japanese status on sustainable management of materials in construction works. So this is a session program. First, I would like to invite Professor Takeshi Katsumi from Kyoto University to give a special presentation on material reuse and recycling in construction works in Japan. He kindly summarized the over, overall status of uh, waste management in construction works in Japan. And then, we would like to invite four uh, presenters. They are the authors of the uh, accepted papers in the special issue. Uh, Mr. Dr. Hiroki Ishimori, Mr. Masaya Iwashita from Japan. And also we would like to invite uh, Mr. Dr. Das and Professor Butui from India and France. And also, at the end of session, we would like to give a Q&A session and summary. And finally, the chair would like to acknowledge the valuable support and expertise for organizing this session by Professor Emeritus Shinchi Sakai. He is an editor-in-chief of Journal of Material Cycle and Waste Management. And also Professor Takeshi Katsumi, Professor uh, Takashi Yamamoto, and Professor Seiji Hashimoto. They are the editors of this special issue in, the, in this journal. And also Professor Reiko Sodeno, he, he, she kindly supports the organizing this session. And also I would like to acknowledge all of the contributors, including authors and reviewers to this special issue. Okay, so uh, first the, I would like to uh, invite Professor Katsumi for the, uh, the first lecture. So Professor Katsumi, please start your uh, lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you, Inui Sensei. Can you hear my voice? Yes, no problem. Let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my uh, screen? 
yes. the start a PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Ni Sensei. Uh, and it is my great honor to make uh, one of the keynote presentations at this conference. I thank the conference organizers for giving me this opportunity. My task today is uh, to introduce a brief overview of uh, uh, the, the uh, construction waste management in our country. And as uh, Inisense mentioned, this session consists of the presentations of the papers submitted to the special issue of the Journal of uh, Material Cycles and Waste Management. And we have our written version uh, as well submitted to this special session, but uh, still under corrections according to the useful reviewers' comments. So I put uh, under review. And uh, my uh, co author, Mr. Sumikura, who is the head of the section regarding the construction waste management in the Ministry of uh, Land, Infrastructure, and Transport. Uh, and I worked as the uh, chair of the, the corresponding committee of the ministry on this issue. So the, we believe that uh, the, this manuscript as well as uh, the, this presentation will uh, give uh, some useful overview of the current status of this uh, country regarding the construction waste management. And uh, today I speak uh, uh, rather independently from the written version of uh, the, the written version. And uh, if uh, the, the, uh, the, this version is accepted, uh, please uh, refer uh, to this uh, uh, the publication, but uh, at this moment, uh, only, only uh, the, the presentation is available. Okay, let me speak uh, very briefly about the background. As you know, and as Ines has already mentioned, construction works uh, generate a large quantity of the waste, uh, which account for almost 20% of the total industrial waste generation. And there are several statuses we had, we had better to be careful regarding the construction industry, particularly for the waste management. For example, large population against a limited available land space in this country, densely developed infrastructures due to this situation. And we have uh, many disasters, uh, therefore disaster resilient uh, infrastructures and land management is required. And Many infrastructures were developed in the uh, 1950s and 60s and uh, requiring the, the maintenances and renovations in the near future or already required maintenances. As a result, uh, we ha might have uh, the construction byproducts or waste. And consciousness against uh, the environmental issues uh, among the people and uh, this uh, consciousness uh, sometimes encour mostly encouraging the material reuse, but uh, sometimes discourage the material reuse due to the rather strict criteria, including the construction industry, and decrease in the number of the workers, and uh, we are re uh, required to have a performance efficiency enhancement uh, in the construction uh, works. These are the issues uh, we had better to uh, uh, include uh, and our considerations, okay? So the, the, this slide is, uh, sorry. So this slide shows uh, the, the, the general the governmental initiatives of the, the uh, related to the construction waste management. There are several related laws, uh, which are rather general, uh, that are the, the basic environmental law prescribing the general concept of the environmental issues and uh, uh, under the law uh, prescribing the, the material recycling. And also there is another law on the waste management. And there are similar laws, including the construction recycling law, which is uh, industry specific uh, regulations. Okay, and our Ministry of the Land Infrastructure Transport uh, have been conducting uh, several actions 
One is uh, the conducting the, the census almost every six years since 1995, uh, collecting the data of generation, treatment, and reuse of the waste materials generated from construction works. And following these uh, census, the government also uh, established a strategic plan uh, every almost six years. Uh, to review the uh, previous status and provide the five to 10 year uh, strategic plan uh, regarding the uh, construction waste management. So the, the focus of the materials, uh, the, the construction byproducts, which can be categorized into a construction waste and surplus soil. The reason why we divide into two groups is that the way construction waste is a uh, regulated by the law on the waste management, waste disposal and the public cleansing act. Uh, so they, they, they are uh, required uh, to be managed under this law and they need uh, some uh, records or some uh, uh, specific treatment measures. And we have uh, surplus soil uh, which is uh, managed outside of uh, this regulation because uh, soil is not the, uh, the, the waste under the legal system. But uh, uh, once the, the surplus soil is uh, generated uh, from uh, some construction sites, uh, sometimes we might have uh, serious environmental or social problems. So therefore, the, the our government uh, recognized that uh, the, the, the Proper management is uh, required uh, also to the, the surplus soil. So in the, the category of the construction byproducts, we have uh, construction waste, uh, uh, having a concrete, asphalt concrete, sludge, wood, mixed waste, and also surplus soil. So this is the very brief summary and status of the construction uh, 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 construction uh, waste, uh, excluding the uh, soils uh, because uh, soil is not included in the, uh, the, the uh, waste. So the, the, we, the government uh, have collected data uh, of the waste asphalt concrete, waste concrete, uh, waste woods, uh, construction sludge, and mixed waste generated from construction works. And they started the year of 1995 and Latest data was collected in 2018, and the uh, second latest one was uh, done by uh, in 2012. So you can see that uh, the, 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 the total waste uh, uh, recycle ratio or recycle reduction ratios are reaching almost a uh, hundred percent, which is uh, uh, 97 percent. And even the, the second latest uh, data exhibit that, that uh, higher than the 95%, although uh, we had 60% uh, at the time of the start of the, the data collections. So we might be able to say that uh, the status of the total uh, construction waste uh, generation in terms of the recycling ratio is uh, uh, really good in terms of the, the, the quantity, okay? And if we look at the data of the asphalt concrete or cement concrete, they have uh, very good numbers in terms of the recycle or reduction ratios uh, reaching uh, higher than 99%. And waste wood or construction sludge followed uh, these uh, uh, wastes and uh, mixed waste have only a 60%. But uh, uh, the generation, total generation, has been decreased uh, for mixed waste, which is uh, also the good achievements. Okay? And every, every uh, strategic plan, the government have established the, the target values for the uh, next census, which are the, the 99 percentage or 19 percentage uh, established at the year of uh, 2012, for the year over 2018. 
So you can see the 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 in terms of the the, the satisfaction against the target, the values are the 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 the, the very good very good status. And uh, I am showing uh, two graphs uh, summarizing this uh, data. Uh, this is the total. Uh, the construction waste management, waste generations, and uh, reuse, recycle, reduction, and uh, disposal at landfill sites. So the total number of the, the uh, construction waste has been uh, decreased uh, gradually, uh, twenty-five percent uh, in uh, these uh, uh, almost uh, uh, more than twenty-five years. And then a uh, reuse and recycle uh, ratio also uh, uh, have been becoming a uh, very very high, very high, more than more than uh, the ninety five percent, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And as a result, uh, landfill generation or landfill ratio uh, has been a decrease significantly in the first uh, uh, ten years, and uh, maintain these uh, low values uh, for uh, following uh, uh, twenty years. So we have only a 2.12 million tons of the amount of uh, landfill construction waste in landfills. This graph is showing the, the status of construction waste by uh, the, the materials, uh, asphalt concrete and concrete reach it uh, higher than 95% in terms of the recycle, reuse or reduction ratios at the year of uh, 2000 and the uh, construction wood waste or uh, sludge they followed uh, the, these two uh, uh, good waste in terms of the recycle reduction ratios and now reached higher than the, the 90 percent and a mixed construction waste is uh, uh, has been a decrease uh, increase in terms of the recycling ratio but still uh, the value is uh, low, but uh, if we look at the total generation mass instead of a ratio, the recycling ratio, uh, you see uh, the significant reduction in terms of the generation mass uh, can be found uh, in these uh, numbers, starting from 9.5 million tons to uh, 2.0 million tons in the, the year of 2018. Okay. So this uh, drawing is indicating that the status of the surplus soil uh, from a soil excavation site to uh, the soil reclamation sites. And we have uh, uh, more than a two uh, point uh, 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 two hundred eighty uh, million cubic meters of soil generated at the construction sites through the excavations. And uh, some of them are used at another construction sites, uh, but uh, many of them are uh, they accepted at the reclamation sites, uh, which are different from the construction sites. So we had better to increase the ratio of the reuse of the uh, these are uh, used soils and reduce the uh, new soil uh, use of the new soils and sometimes uh, increase the recovered waste and uh, possibly the reclamation uh, at the uh, site uh, might be decreased, okay? So in total, 80% of surplus soils are used in the construction industry. And uh, uh, there are many reasons uh, to encourage uh, such a high numbers of the the reuse of the uh, surplus soil utilizations. And one of them are the technical development, including the soil improvement. And another uh, important uh, uh, activity, so uh, efforts, uh, they, 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 they created a, the system to have uh, the uh, exchange of the information regarding the soil excavation and uh, reclamation uh, in the regional basis uh, for or to have uh, uh, better connections 
of the uh, excavation sites and reclamation sites. So we have uh, good actions, but also we have uh, uh, some limitations uh, such as uh, the geogenic contaminations, which uh, have been discouraging the reuse of the uh, soils because uh, uh, the, the people and uh, uh, construction sectors are likely to hesitate the use of the soils having the geogenic or natural contaminations exceeding the uh, regulatory limits. And also uh, we have uh, uh, some illegal dumpings uh, which occurred uh, cause, uh, causing uh, several environmental or serious uh, problems. So we should uh, uh, challenge uh, these uh, 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 problems. So in the year of 2020, the government uh, established uh, the strategic plan uh, to promote recycle in the construction works. In this uh, strategic plan or strategic program, uh, the, the, the government reviewed uh, the status. And as I mentioned, the reuse and reduction ratios have been increased from a 60% in the 1990s to uh, uh, higher than 95% in the, the 2018. But we still have a problem. As I mentioned, we have a low recycle ratio for mixed waste and uh, uh, large disposal amounts of the uh, waste plastics generated from a construction works, which uh, was not mentioned in my presentation in detail, and illegal or improper soil management. So the, the strategic program uh, for the uh, promotion of a recycle in construction works in 2020, uh, listed the, the, the follow in the these are three main tasks. The first, uh, maintain the high recycle ratio and uh, contribute to the materials recycle society. And the second, uh, be conscious about uh, uh, the management of the uh, large numbers of the old infrastructures and also the, the uh, catastrophic disasters which already occurred or which uh, anticipated to occur in the near future. And third issue is uh, the productivity enhancement or productivity efficiency uh, improvement. Uh, for example, possibly applying the information and communication technology or other innovative technologies. So the, the specific uh, measures uh, to uh, achieve uh, these main tasks might include uh, the, the treatment and uh, application technologies and logistics management and uh, lures to support uh, the better logistics and efficient tra tracing system uh, to give uh, the, uh, the, the social awareness or transparencies of the, the works conducted in the industry and uh, related to public relations, et cetera. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of the, the not only better uh, or larger quantities, but also in terms of the uh, better quality. That's uh, the, the summary of the program uh, to uh, promote the uh, recycle uh, of the construction uh, waste. Uh, gener uh, established in the, uh, the government in 2020. Let me briefly talk about uh, some of the, the waste and byproducts. Uh, for example, waste concrete. The, we have uh, uh, recycled concrete aggregates, uh, which are the, the, the materials uh, uh, simply uh, crushing uh, the, the waste concrete and screened uh, based on the grain sizes and widely utilized as uh, RCA or RCE40 or some other numbers with uh, the maximum grain sizes and having uh, excellent interacting effects. So wide reuse in the road base, uh, ground improvement, et cetera. But uh, uh, recently, the, the many institutions have tried to utilize a uh, higher quality of the utilizations uh, such as uh, recovered aggregate 
uh, to be used in concrete. So the cement mortar uh, has been removed uh, completely by uh, some uh, uh, method, including a thermal and grinding method uh, to obtain the high quality aggregate. And not only the technology developed, but also the, the standards have been uh, developed uh, by the related institutions. Uh, so now we have a uh, GIS uh, standard for recovered aggregates called uh, high, middle, and low, and uh, high uh, categorized uh, recycled recovered aggregates are expected to be used in the, uh, the, the uh, normal uh, concrete, cement concrete structures. And as a result, uh, generating the recovered aggregates, we have uh, the waste concrete powder. Uh, therefore, this powder is required to be used uh, in some applications such as uh, cement raw materials or soil improvements. So as I mentioned uh, the, the, in the, the strategic plan in the year of 2020, the, the quality is uh, also important uh, as well as uh, the quantity. So uh, it's good uh, to encourage the use of the, uh, as, uh, the recovered aggregates but uh, until now, the most of the materials uh, used as the uh, uh, recycled concrete aggregate after simple brushing and screening. The, uh, the, regarding the soil management, the, there are various types of the, the soils. So therefore, the, the, the categorization, the classification was the important task. So the government has established uh, the, the classification of uh, such soils, uh, which was established in the year of uh, 1993, uh, having uh, five uh, categories based on the, the strength or grain size or uh, the, the, the water content. So the, the, depending on the, the class of the soils, application can also be defined, uh, can be defined. So therefore, uh, this uh, classification uh, has uh, been encouraging the utilization of the supply soils as well as the matching of the, the site of the excavation and uh, reclamations, okay? So due to the limited time, I'm not speaking uh, on this issue in detail, but uh, uh, recent uh, uh, innovative action is uh, the tracing technology, uh, which is uh, developed by the support of the, uh, the government. The, here, uh, the system has been developed uh, to track the soil transport from the excavation sites to the reclamation sites by using uh, very simple equipments. The, the, the system requires uh, to have uh, only mobile phone or PC at the soil excavation sites or uh, reclamation sites, as well as the, the soil storage sites if uh, the soil is transported to the storage sites. And the, the, the driver of the vehicles to transport the soils uh, have uh, the IC card, together with him or her, and at the sites of, uh, uh, at the time of the, the departure of the soil excavation, the, the certification has been conducted by uh, uh, using a mobile phone and the IC card, and the certification has been done. And as a result, uh, the, the data has been collected at the, the, uh, the uh, cloud computer at the center of the system. And the same, same uh, action has been uh, done at the site of the reclamation. So therefore, the, all the data are automatically collected and uh, uh, the integrated so that uh, the, the, the no labor works are required uh, to see or collect the data and uh, see the status of the uh, soil transportation or soil excavation or soil reclamation. So related institutions, uh, uh, which are the, the excavation companies or reclamation companies or sites, 
or even the, the local governments, uh, which uh, will monitor the situation of the old uh, the construction sites. Uh, the, the, it might be possible uh, to uh, monitor uh, the, the, this system, uh, the, this uh, status rather easily, okay? So the, let me skip uh, over some of the slides I have uh, and uh, let me summarize my presentation due to the limited time. And private and uh, public uh, actions achieved, uh, uh, contributed to the uh, high recycle ratio of uh, construction of waste and byproducts. Uh, but the problems are still exist for the soil management or plastic waste. I'm sorry, I did not speak uh, the plastic waste management in detail. And uh, challenges are required in relation to the management of the all the infrastructures and natural disasters and decrease in the workers. And innovative technologies are expected to be utilized uh, to solve uh, such uh, problems. And I have uh, introduced uh, one of the examples as the, the, uh, the innovative technologies, ICTs, uh, to be used for the soil management. And better qualities of their use and the recycle are expected, uh, uh, as I mentioned, for the, uh, the concrete waste and more beneficial applications but also reliable management, okay? So, so these are the, the uh, what we have uh, discussed or we have uh, conducted or we have uh, uh, challenged. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, we have uh, uh, many questions, if you have questions or comments, uh, I'll be happy to accept uh, uh, them uh, after the pre this presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your very kind attention. Thank you. Thank you for Professor Katsumi for giving a very comprehensive review of the Japanese status on the construction waste management and as well as the management of the surplus soil. Okay, so sorry, the due to time limitation, if you ha oh, uh, have any question and comment, could you use a Q&A function of the Zoom system? Maybe. Uh, we can accept the question from the audience from this uh, Q&A system in the Zoom. Okay, now uh, we would like to move to the uh, general presentation. Uh, we have four pre general presentations in this session. The first presenter is uh, Dr. Hiroki Ishimori from the National Institute of, for Environmental Studies. So he talks about the uh, application uh, technology of the construction waste to the agricultural field. So uh, could you start your presentation, Dr. Ishimori? Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, thank no you very much. Uh, thank you for chairman and uh, everyone. Uh, I am Ishimori, uh, working for uh, National Institute for Environmental Studies. And uh, let me introduce you about uh, uh, this title. Uh, uh, regarding the challenge of waste utilization uh, to agriculture field. Uh, as you know, uh, waste utilization is now advanced uh, more and, and more. Uh, this topic introduces uh, the challenge of, for utilize, utilizing waste uh, for plant growth as alternative fertilizer. Uh, this will contribute to improve the social problems such as uh, food self-sufficiency rate and uh, greening in urban areas. Uh, waste includes uh, a, a lot of minerals such as nitrogen, uh, for, phosphorus, uh, and potassium, and so on. Also, uh, calcium and silica are uh, uh, silica uh, works uh, to reduce uh, the environmental stress, and uh, magnesium is the most important factor uh, for uh, photosynthesis. <coughs> Uh, although uh, the plant factories 
uh, has been promoted recently in order to enhance food management uh, in Japan. Uh, but uh, the operating cost, including your writing cost, uh, become uh, 49, uh, 47 times higher uh, than traditional agriculture. Uh, we uh, expect uh, that waste utilization is eff effective for reducing cost and therefore we study. Uh, here is uh, uh, chemical component uh, con uh, contents in waste uh, as a uh, reference. Uh, like this, uh, waste has a lot of minerals and the waste utilization is limited to the use in civil engineering works uh, from a set of good mechanical properties. Uh, this study are developing and uh, encouraging uh, a new way, uh, focusing uh, on such uh, chemical properties uh, in order to uh, promote uh, the utilization. And uh, here is a research flow based on uh, knowledge of uh, our waste engineering. Uh, first of all, uh, we set uh, simplify the assumption uh, for growing uh, plant uh, healthy. And that is uh, considered a suppliable uh, amount from uh, waste uh, should be uh, more than uh, mineral contents in plant uh, on market. Uh, for a uh, verification of this assumption, uh, we conduct the origin test uh, and a uh, plant growth test. Uh, Ferronical slug uh, has a lot of magnesium, uh, which enhances uh, photosynthesis, and waste concrete has a lot of calcium and silica as a uh, nutrient. Although uh, a lot of chemical, uh, a lot of alkalines uh, is also included, uh, so acid rain is co-used uh, to new, uh, naturalize the uh, pH. Uh, therefore, experiment conditions are changed, uh, changes of uh, writing uh, levels and waste amount, uh, namely uh, nutrient concentration level. Uh, here is the result of serial, serial batch leaching test uh, using waste concrete and uh, ferronickel slug uh, with a uh, disparance uh, particle size. Uh, this test uh, can provide a total amount of minerals leaching from waste, uh, like a uh, pink line. Uh, in contrast, uh, we'd like to know uh, how much a uh, plant uh, needs uh, for growth. Uh, this level is dependent on the type of plant. And uh, so uh, we set uh, this target level uh, from uh, chemical contents uh, of uh, food sold in supermarkets. And thus we bought supermarket food of uh, romaine lettuce and uh, Chinese uh, spinach. Uh, uh, according to, uh, and uh, we measured uh, their com chemical compo uh, compositions uh, according to acid uh, digestion. Uh, samples were uh, dried and powdered with uh, milling. And then uh, the powdered ones uh, were completely dissolved uh, with uh, two types of acid. Finally, uh, the liquids obtained uh, this process uh, were analyzed using uh, ICP and ion chromatograph. Uh, therefore, a suppliable amount uh, can be evaluated from a previous leaking test. Uh, and then, uh, uh, the mineral uh, target, um, uh, target of uh, mineral contents. Uh, is estimated from acid digestion. Uh, finally, uh, we did this uh, verification uh, through a uh, plant growth test. Uh, here is the results of plant growth tests uh, for uh, romaine lettuce uh, grown by uh, waste concrete. Uh, first uh, three uh, cases uh, are not good results uh, like this. Uh, 
even if waste concrete is used as a fertilizer. It is because potassium, which is well known most important factor for growth, is not included in rice base in these cases. So thus, next we get three cases. Uh, conduct three cases additionally uh, on a uh, right side, uh, right uh, side. Uh, and uh, these tests uh, are con conducted un under uh, additional potassium uh, from outside. Uh, as a, uh, as a, uh, WC4 uh, is a control case, uh, WC5 and WC3 uh, using waste concrete uh, had a uh, larger uh, length and a uh, weight of plants. Uh, in contrast, uh, here is the result of Chinese spinach uh, with a uh, ferronical slug. Uh, spinach uh, grew uh, with a uh, ferronical slug uh, like this and uh, like this. Uh, this is detailed cons uh, consideration. Uh, left figure shows a uh, uh, difference uh, in uh, chemical composition uh, between a uh, grown uh, spinach uh, and a uh, market one, uh, gray hatch. Uh, even if chemical, uh, chemical contents are not uh, more than uh, those of market one, uh, spinach, uh, Chinese spinach uh, grew uh, healthily uh, as appearance. Uh, right here shows uh, efficiency of uh, ferronical slug. Uh, top one shows uh, superior growth uh, using uh, ferronical slug, uh, like a uh, red line, uh, than not using uh, ferronical slug, uh, like blue one. Uh, additionally, as shown in bottom one, Ferronical slug uh, uh, provide uh, the magnesium uh, for uh, magnesium for uh, photosynthesis, uh, resulting in uh, enhancement uh, of uh, phosphorus uh, uptake, uh, like a uh, red dot line. Uh, here is our conclusion. A waste concrete and a ferronical slug uh, have a uh, potential to, uh, to give uh, a good growth to plants. The promotion of uh, photosynthesis and uh, improvement of uh, nu nutrient uh, absorption of a ferronical slug will uh, contribute, uh, contribute as a plant factory uh, uh, operation uh, with uh, low uh, lower uh, light intensity, uh, resulting in uh, the reduction of uh, operating costs. Uh, and uh, knowledge of our waste management engineering, uh, such as uh, reaching uh, chemical composition analysis and uh, chemical equilibrium analysis are useful uh, for designing how to grow uh, plants uh, using uh, waste. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ishimori, uh, by giving the new uh, approaches for the using the construction waste in terms of the chemical composition and uh, improvement of the plant growth uh, as using as a fertilizer. Okay. Uh, as I uh, explained in the uh, before, question from the audience is accepted from the Q&A uh, corner on, in the Zoom. So if you have any question, uh, could you uh, type your uh, question? And uh, Dr. Ishimori will kindly answer the question the, from the, this corner. OK, uh, very, uh, many thanks for giving a very good uh, presentation, Dr. Ishimori. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so next presenter is uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Masaya Iwashita from Okumura Corporation. Uh, his target is uh, uh, 
waste material generated by the catastrophic disaster. Maybe Professor Katsumi explained in his lecture and the management of the huge amount of the uh, waste uh, generated by the catastrophic disaster is one of the big issue in the uh, construction industry. So he talks about the new technology for the treating the this kind of the waste material using the uh, uh, using the uh, deep learning technology. So, uh, Mr. Iwashita, could you start your presentation? Thank you. Uh, in a sense, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm an engineer for a construction company called Okumura Corporation. Today, I would like to present our research results on particle size. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, to, uh, to hey, no problem. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, today, I would like to present our research results on particle size distribution prediction using deep learning. The background of this study is described below. Large scale tsunami disaster, such as a Great East Japan earthquake, generate enormous amount of tsunami deposits in the affected area. These tsunami deposits must be properly disposed of and reused as much as possible. But the issue is how to recycle them. Tsunami deposits are mainly reused as geomet materials, but visual inspection mechanism mechanical testing and analysis are required for reuse and treatment. Particularly, the measurement of particle size distribution of soils is important for the classification of deposits, but sieve analysis to predict particle size distribution cannot be performed on large quantity of tsunami deposit. An alternative to the sieve analysis is to predict size by extracting grain contour from the image. However, this method cannot be used for small particles whose size cannot be identified from the image. The photos shown here are close-up views of soil samples of different particle size taken with a standard digital camera. Soils in the particle size range 2 mm to 4.75 mm had their contours extracted by image processing. But those in the particle size range of 0.425 mm to 0.6 mm and less than 0.075 mm did not have their contours extracted even with image processing. However, it can be seen that the sets of these small particles provide the soil surface with a unique character. Deep learning is a typical technique to for extracting and recognizing various features of images. Using deep learning, it may be possible to predict, predict particle size distribution based on the features of these sets of particles. In this study, we use deep learning to predict particle size distribution from images of fine-grained soil and sandy soil and confirm the accuracy and the issue involved. The experimental flow is shown here. First, the raw soil is selected. We selected a commercial soil with a wide distribution of the fine grains and gravels. The raw soil is sieved and divided into seven size fractions. These size fractionated soils are photographed with a digital camera. The size fractionated soil was placed in a container and 150 samples each were taken from the top for a total of 1,050 samples. Since 1,050 samples are not enough to apply deep learning, we augmented the image data for training from these images. As a data augmentation method, we randomly split and joined these images. The augmented image data created in this way are prepared in 3,000 samples. The reason for creating the augmented data in this way will be explained later. Deep learning model is then trained on a total of 4,050 samples, including augmented images. Learning pattern will be explained later. 
The sandy and fine grained soil are mixed with size fractionated soil, and images are taken to prepare data for evaluation of prediction accuracy. These evaluation data are input to the trained deep learning models, and they, their accuracy is evaluated as RMSE. Next, the particle size distribution of soil used in the experiment is described. <coughs> the sieve is divided into seven fractions according to JRS from less than 0.075 mm to 4.75 mm. Sandy and fine grained soils are composed of a minimum 5% of particle from each fraction. Fine grained soil is composed of 55 fine grains, and sandy soil is composed of five fine grains. Images of seven grains size fractionated soils are used as training data for deep learning. As you can see in the gra graph below, the particle size distribution of the mixed soil that we want to predict is completely different from that, that of the size fractionated soil that we will use for training. If AI runs the unity of the particle size distribution of size fractionated soils, it may not be able to predict the distribution of various particle size distribution of soil mixture. Therefore, we create the training image in which each size fractionated soil was randomly split and joined. The grain size distribution of the split and joined image is calculated from the surface area ratio. <coughs> Some may argue that if we want to predict the particle size distribution of sandy and fine grained soil, we should use images of sandy and fine grained soil as training data for deep learning. Here we explain why we do not use such mixed soil as training data. Above is a photo of the surface of the mixed soil as it was agitated. Note the distribution of the gravels. Even soils with the same particle size distribution have variation in their surface particle size distribution. This means that the soil surface does not always contain the data needed to predict the soil particle size distribution. On the other hand, the, the size fractionated soil shows below is composed of only the particle of the fra that fraction. So the image for information of the particle size distribution remains correct, no matter how many times that soil is agitated. For this reason, reason we will use only size fractionated soil image and augmented image from these images as training data. Next, we describe the deep learning model we have constructed. The pixel size of the soil image used as input 224 by 224. This image is decomposed into RGB to create 224 by 224 by 3 size data. VGG16 is used for deep learning architecture. Here, the RGB data is converted to 7 by 7 by 512 size. Next, input the converted data into full connected layer of VGG16. Here, the input data is compressed to 4096 size. The data is often input, the data is then input to full connected layer created for this experiment. Here, the input data is compressed down to seven fractions. Finally, the softmax function is used to output the percentage. The weights to be learned are the weights of the convolutional kernel and all the full connected layer in this range. For learning patterns that use the transfer learning, we do not optimize the weights for this part, but use the default value of VGG16. The final prediction outputs the percentage of each fraction so that the sum is 100%. Such prediction is performed, performed on 30 images each for sandy, and so, uh, sandy soil and fine grained soil. The average value is used as the predicted result for that soil. This is because, as indicated 
earlier, the surface of soil with a certain grain size distribution does not necessarily show the correct information of the grain size distribution. <coughs> Therefore, the average of the prediction results from multiple images is used as a final prediction. The predicted results obtained by averaging is compared for accuracy by taking the root mean square error with the true value of the particle size distribution. Note that although cumulative PSD curve that accumulates their results is often used to confirm the particle size distribution. Their curve is not used in, the, in this verification. This is because cumulative PSD curve is the result of accumulating particle in order of thinness and prediction error are also accumulated. Therefore, the accuracy of the model cannot be properly verified. Exper experimental patterns are shown in this table. In this study, we applied transfer learning and data augmentation. To confirm the effectiveness of these two methods, we also include, included model one without data augmentation with split and joint images for training and model three without transfer learning, we evaluate the accuracy of each of these three models. Experimental results for model one are shown on the left. Each prediction for sandy and fine-grained soils capture the trend of the true value. However, when looking at the sample prediction, it, notice, it, it is noticeable that certain grain shapes are predicted to be 100%. This is thought to be the result of the model learning only size fractionated soil features. In sandy soil, particles between 0.6 mm and 2 mm were detected in excess of 10%. And in fine grained soil, particles smaller than 0.075 mm were detected in excess 10%. No, that, no particular larger than 0.425 mm were detected in the fine-grained soil. Experimental results for model 2 are shown on the left. The prediction for sandy and fine-grained soils are consistent in the trend. The result of sample prediction are le less likely to be limited to specific particle. The accuracy is relatively good with no particle size segment showing an error of more than 10%. This is thought to be the result of learning augmented data with split joint images. The over prediction of, the, of fine grained soil was reduced, but soil particle between 0.106 and 0.25 millimeter were over predicted, resulting in in no detection of soil particle larger than 0.425 mm. <coughs> Experimental results for model three are shown on the left. The same trends to the result of model two are obtained, but the over detection of fine, grain is fine grains in fine grained soil is comparable to model one. All models over predict the fine-grained fraction of fine-grained soil and underpredict the particle larger than 0.425 mm. One possible reason for this is that the fine, particle, uh, fine particles adhere to the larger particles. Fine soils smaller than 0.075 mm are powdery and adhere to the surface of the larger particles. This is thought to be caused the loss of characteristic unique to large particles, making prediction difficult. This, is, this idea is supported by the fact that such results do not occur in sandy soils with a low fine particle content. The following are conclusions of this study. Comparison of the three models shows that the application of data augmentation and transfer learning improves RMSE. In particular, the two models to which data augmented was applied, pro applied produced predictable result with an RMSE of less than 0.11. 
in fine grain soils, there was a tendency to over predict the fine grain fraction and under predicted soil particle larger than 0.425 mm. This may be due to the, the attachment of the fine particles to larger particles. The following are prospects of this research. For under, under prediction of large particles due to attachment of fine particles, mixed soil, mixed soil with attached fine particles should be added to the training data to improve accuracy. The problem of adhesion may be even more pronounced when the soil contains moisture. In this, in, in this experiment, we used naturally dried soil, but we believe that experiments using moisture content as a parameter will be necessary in the future. The soil used in this experiment was artificially composed mixture to evaluate tsunami deposits Experiments using real samples are also needed. This, con concludes, my this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Iwashita. Uh, thank you very uh, giving the uh, achievement and also limitation of this technique. So I hope that this technology will be more uh, developed for the uh, uh, the, the, uh, identifying the soil particle size for the tsunami deposit. So in the, as I informed in the chat, please post your comments and question for this presentation uh, through the Q&A. So thank you for a good presentation, uh, Mr. Iwashita. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so next presenter, uh, uh, I would like to invite the presenter from India. Uh, his presentation title. Uh, his presentation title is. Uh, sorry, uh, wait a moment. His presentation title is durability analysis and optimization of the binary system of waste cement concrete and grass beads geopolymer mortar. So his research is deal with uh, one of the very big issues, the durability of the uh, recycled materials and also uh, using the geopolymerization is uh, one of the uh, perspective technology for the reusing of construction waste. So I would like to invite the uh, uh, Solab Kumar Das from Marabia National Institute of Technology from India. So could you start your presentation? Okay, uh, good morning. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, my screen is visible to all. No problem. That goes well. Okay, okay. Fine, yeah. fine. Uh, so, uh, uh, this article, uh, the just a minute. Okay, uh, so the title has already uh, been nicely described about the issues uh, being discussed in this article. Uh, so uh, it's the durability analysis and optimization of a binary system of waste cement concrete and glass-based uh, geopolymer model. So the primary objective of this research uh, is to mostly see that uh, how we can effectively use the waste cement concrete as a 100% um, uh, May precursor for geopolymer production uh, because uh, uh, during geopolymer production, one thing uh, is uh, important uh, that is the uh, curing. Uh, so, heat curing is an issue uh, where you can uh, see that if you go for heat curing at a temperature of 50 degrees or 60 degrees for a uh, uh, time of like 24 hours, uh, then it's eventually increase the cost uh, of your product. So to look onto this issue, uh, we have identified uh, from some of the literatures that any waste product, uh, which is a good amount of calcium oxide, can be utilized, which will have a uh, like uh, 
combined effect of uh, both geopolymers and uh, a little bit of formation of uh, CSH gel. So from that, uh, we have identified in our research program um, under the guidance of uh, Sandeep Srivastav, uh, who is my supervisor also. Uh, currently, I am pursuing my PhD uh, under his guidance. Uh, so we have identified uh, West Cement Concrete um, as our sole precursor uh, for geopolymer production. But uh, at the same time, uh, what we uh, uh, find that uh, for strength, it is OK. Uh, it is having a good amount of uh, strength uh, uh, according to the requirements for a machinery mortar. Uh, but when it comes to durability, so the very first thing is your uh, water absorption. So. Uh, so those kind of issues uh, related to uh, yes, acid attack, related to sulfate attack. So those kind of things are lacking when we're using only West cement concrete as a sole precursor for geopolymer production. So uh, uh, with a brief uh, idea about why we approach for this uh, uh, work, I'm moving on to the next slide. That is, uh, what is the research gap here? So. Okay. Why this is fine. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, you can see that this is the research gaps. Uh, uh, so the very first thing is the literature suggests that if you go for uh, only West cement concrete, you will be having a average to low compressive strength because when you talk about mortar or concrete, anything, the first objective is to attain a moderate amount of compressive strength and then only you can proceed further with other parameters. And uh, the curing regime that I've already discussed is mostly heat curing. So in my research, I have uh, maintained an ambient temperature curing throughout the process. Uh, so it was a 30 degree uh, centigrade. So uh, I maintained this temperature uh, to see that whether uh, my mix can attain the strength or not within this temperature. And the third one is the durability assessment of West cement concrete. Uh, and uh, using and also using glass waste uh, as a mixture. So these are uh, the objectives, uh, sorry, our aim of my research. That is uh, assessment of compressive strength of waste, cement, concrete, and glass waste as a binary mixture. And to keep the curing design uh, as an ambient temperature and effectively analyze the resistance of your mortar uh, to chemical attacks while utilizing glass waste. Okay, uh, so, uh, so these are the materials uh, being used. If you see the waste cement concrete, it is the demolished plain cement concrete uh, from a local demolition site. We have collected it and then grounded, <coughs> grinded it uh, to get a particle size of less than 90 micron. And uh, then glass waste, uh, these are mostly the waste bottles, uh, glass panels, and uh, other waste, those uh, what we uh, put in the landfill. So we collected them again, we uh, grinded it uh, to get a particle size less than 90 micron. Then the fine uh, aggregate used here is river sand of zone two grade uh, <clears throat> as per Indian standard. Uh, and uh, Fourth one is the alkaline solution. So alkaline solution, we have used 10 molar sodium hydroxide solution with the sodium silicate uh, of our, having an alkali mixture ratio of one is to 2.5. Okay, uh, so, uh, uh, so these are the different tests uh, performed in this study. So in the, in the first state, we, uh, we assess the flowability that um, our mortar should attain 105% flow percentage as per the steam pool. And there is a setting time requirement also because we were using two types of waste. So there's a combination effect on the setting time. And then we go for the compressive strength testing before and after exposure to the aggressive environment. And, and uh, we have did, we did also a ultrasonic pulse velocity test, which is an NED test. It gives us a basic idea about the um, uh, density and uh, it helps us to calculate uh, the modulus of elasticity. So uh, 
if you see in the alkaline mixture ratio, so uh, you can say that why only 10 molar uh, is being used. So for that, uh, we uh, you can refer this article. This is the detailed analysis why we have chosen 10 molar and 2.5 as this study. So this is the previous study, which has already been published in the, in the journal. Uh, you can refer it also to get the idea about uh, why uh, this particular uh, solution is being taken uh, for this study. So coming to the... Uh, um, not uh, raw material uh, here, uh, the ACM images. So the left one is the image for your uh, cement concrete and the right one is the glass waste. So uh, you can see the particle size after grinding, it's mostly irregular in shape uh, with a, a high level of anhydrous cement particles presence in the uh, cement, uh, waste cement concrete particle. Whereas for the particle size distribution graph, uh, you can say that uh, your uh, glass waste is having a higher particle fineness uh, than the waste cement concrete. Okay, uh, so so these are the XRF analysis uh, to get the oxide content of uh, different uh, uh, waste. That is a waste cement concrete and glass waste. So uh, when you could talk about geopolymer, the important thing uh, comes to um, into amount that what are the uh, amount of silicon dioxide, uh, aluminum trioxide and the calcium oxide present. So here you can see that uh, uh, glass waste, both glass waste and uh, waste cement concrete is having a good amount of calcium oxide, which is a, a good sign so that um, we can achieve a moderate amount of compressive strength at temperature, at ambient temperature. So that is one of the reason why um, I'm choosing these two waste because um, my focus is on to utilizing uh, or producing geopolymer at uh, ambient temperature. And these are some of the physical uh, properties of the waste uh, uh, utilized, uh, the materials utilized here. And coming to the geopolymerization process, so uh, this is the uh, like uh, in total it's having a nine steps as described by Bakrev uh, in, in an article uh, in 2005, it has been published. Uh, you can refer that article, it's a nice article. Uh, so I, I found this article helpful to understand the process of geopolymerization. So uh, the first three process is the isolation of silicon alumina. Okay, uh, so in the first three steps, in the next two steps, you will see the alkali we are using here uh, is uh, acting as a charge balancing medium to uh, balance the silicon alumina and to form the polymer, uh, the monomer, not the polymer, but the monomer stage. Uh, and finally, we have the condensation and uh, of cation and, and, and pairs and leads to the formation of dimers and trimer ion. So from that dimer and trimer, you will move on to the polymers uh, because it is a 3D chain and it's a continuous process. So uh, once the monomer goes to dimer, to trimer, and then it will move on to a, a polymer. So this is overall the chemical uh, uh, equation involved of, uh, in geopolymerization. And Coming to the fresh and hardened property study, so uh, this is the flowability uh, study where you can see that all the samples where the glass powder is being used as 10, 20, 30, up to 50 percent uh, in this uh, in this um, symbol, you can see that W100 is 100 percent waste cement concrete and uh, G0 means glass waste is having a zero percentage. So accordingly, we have taken it up to 50 percent replacement and you can see the increment of the replacement. Uh, there is a, a increment in the flowability, which is mainly due to the uh, higher amount of the uh, sorry, lower amount of water absorption and the glassy surface of uh, glass wastes. And coming to the the setting time, interestingly, you'll see that the initial setting time and the final setting time both get reduced when you are increasing the glass waste. Uh, okay, so when you're increasing the glass waste, glass is having a higher amount of amorphous silica, and that silica is uh, going through a rapid uh, hydrogen when it comes in contact with. Uh, uh, the alkali solution. So that is one of the reasons why we are, should also look into the setting time that uh, it's uh, getting highly reduced when you are using glass waste as a uh, waste uh, material. And these are the compressive strengths at up to 90 days and uh, moderately you can see that uh, the highest uh, is uh, obtained by 80% and 20% replacement where 80% is your waste cement concrete and 20% is your um, 
uh, glass width. So this is the optimum mix we found from the compressive strength test. Uh, and then uh, this is the UPV. So uh, UPV also, you'll see that uh, again, uh, relating with the compressive, st uh, compressive strength, the W80 G20 mixture, obtain the maximum modulus of elasticity, dynamic modulus of elasticity. So under the durability analysis, uh, uh, you can see that from the first uh, figure, that is figure six, the variation in water absorption through capillary rise. Uh, here, the minimum rise uh, is uh, obtained by uh, like this 20, 30 uh, percent, or even up to 40 percent of mixture. And beyond that, again, the rise goes up. So we have a range of 20 to 40 percent. We can say uh, this kind of replacement will be helpful and uh, not sticking to a certain uh, point or a certain percentage, but can say that that is uh, for like 20 to uh, 30 percent replacement uh, is beneficial for long term capillary rise um, water absorption through capillary rise and then we have these densities uh, again uh, uh, this uh, density is having a good effect and uh, uh, okay sorry i'm also running out of time anyways i'm moving it a little bit fast Mm, uh, so coming to the durability, uh, you can see that uh, our waste cement concrete is having a huge reduction both in mass and in compressive strength. This black line uh, is the 100% waste cement concrete. And so anywhere if you're utilizing glass waste, it is increasing the durability in terms of mass and uh, your compressive strength retainment also. And for uh, sulfate attack, things remain same, but there is initial gain in the mass and in the strength also up to like seven to 14 days. And then it gets reduced uh, and the ex experiment has been conducted up to 90 days. And this is the performance index uh, uh, where you can uh, see that I have uh, categorized all the tests I have been done in a scale of zero to one, where zero is uh, minimum effect and one is the um, best performance by a particular mixture. So here uh, we have the mixtures and uh, these are the different uh, um, outputs of different test results and on an average 20% uh, and 40% mixture, 20% glass waste and 40% glass waste, glass waste mixture comes out to be the uh, best uh, 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 proportion to be used uh, as a replacement material of uh, waste cement concrete. And these are uh, just the conclusions. So from this conclusion, uh, you can say that uh, the increase in the flowability of the mixture can uh, both uh, the reducing setting time, if you uh, incorporate glass waste, then 20% and 40% glass waste uh, powder uh, containing mixture is more resistive than other kind and then other uh, mixing proportions and uh, coming to the last point that is the most important thing that from the findings it can be included the glass waste powder and hence the compressive strength as well resistance towards chemical attack for cement concrete based geopolymers so that's the reason why uh, i uh, so suggest that uh, those who are working in geopolymer can use glass waste for a certain proportion, though it slacks in aluminum, aluminum oxide, but it can be studied more regressively. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Enum. Okay, uh, thank you for your uh, nice presentation, uh, Mr. Das from India. Uh, sorry for disturbing you early in the morning in, the, uh, in the India. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, let me unshare the screen. Uh, yeah. Getting... Okay. 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 It's, uh, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice presentation. Okay. So final presenter uh, is a uh, hydration characteristic of coconut fibers, reinforced mortars contains CSA and Portland cement. Uh, the present given by the Professor Mohamed Boutou from the uh, Estic Khan from France. But as you know, due to the time difference, uh, I, uh, we already record his presentation. And from now on, we stream the uh, video on his presentation. So could you wait for a while?
Okay, uh, I would like to start the presentation, his presentation. Hello everyone and uh, good morning. My name is uh, Mohamed Boutwil. I'm a professor in civil engineering at uh, ASITC Caen, which is uh, a civil engineering uh, in uh, Normandy, uh, France. And today I will be talking about uh, the hydration characteristics of coconut fibers reinforced motors containing calcium sulfoaluminate uh, cement and Portland cement. Uh, this uh, work uh, is a part of a PhD uh, thesis who has been uh, defended by uh, Mrs. Uh, Yuan uh, B uh, last year. Uh, I will be following the, this plan. So after uh, an introduction uh, and also after talking about the objectives of this work, I will be presenting the materials and the methods that has been used uh, in this uh, research work. And uh, then I will show you some uh, results uh, and discuss also these results. Uh, and I will uh, finish uh, with, the, with the conclusions. So first, and uh, as uh, an introduction, uh, I would like uh, to present uh, uh, the research topics of uh, our research lab. Uh, so our main uh, research topic is about sustainable uh, materials uh, using uh, natural fibers. And uh, this is what we call uh, bio-based uh, uh, materials. So of course, the aim of using natural fibers and uh, natural materials is to uh, decrease the uh, environmental uh, impact in terms of uh, CO2 emissions, uh, energy, uh, also consumption, and also natural resources uh, consumptions. Uh, so as you may know, uh, the um, bio-based materials are used uh, in two uh, function. The first one, uh, the materials are used as a structural materials, uh, that means they will uh, bear uh, loads. And the second one uh, is uh, the insulation uh, function. And uh, there are some materials who uh, could, could have uh, both uh, functions. So in terms of uh, natural uh, fibers, uh, we used to use different kind of uh, natural fibers and um, we have been using first uh, flux fibers that is uh, mainly produced in Normandy uh, as you can uh, see here uh, in these uh, pictures and we, uh, we are using the uh, fibers uh, as, a, uh, as a material uh, in the replacement of uh, steel or uh, in the replacement of uh, uh, glass uh, fibers. And um, in uh, uh, recent years, uh, we have uh, been using also uh, some fibers that um, come from Vietnam and uh, uh, it concerns uh, coconut uh, uh, fibers. As an introduction also, I would like also to present you the objectives of uh, our uh, research in, uh, uh, in this topic. So the first objective is about uh, investigation uh, on uh, the fibers uh, itself uh, and their also application ability uh, in building construction. Uh, and after uh, we, um, we were developing uh, the cementitious uh, materials by incorporating the natural fibers, either coconut or uh, flax. Uh, so, in this, uh, uh, within this uh, objective, we um, uh, try to uh, uh, to have uh, the ideal mix to uh, achieve the technical uh, properties. Uh, either uh, insulation properties or uh, mechanical uh, properties. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, today I will be focusing on uh, uh, one aspect of, uh, of the mix uh, design and one aspect of the, um, uh, uh, this, uh, these materials. Uh, and this uh, aspect is related to uh, hydration characteristics uh, when uh, using coconut fibers in uh, mortars using both uh, two different, uh, actually two different cements, um, calcium pseudofoaluminate cement and a Portland cement. And I will not be talking about the durability, uh, probably uh, another, uh, another time. Uh, so now I would like to present the materials and the methods that uh, we have been uh, using. Uh, so we, uh, we have been working on uh, mortars that have been reinforced with uh, fibers. Uh, the mortars uh, um, includes two different uh, cements, OPC, uh, Ortland, uh, ordinary, sorry, Ortland, ordinary Portland cement uh, and uh, calcium silver aluminate cement, sand of course and coconut fibers with um, uh, an average uh, length of uh, 16 millimeters, uh, but the range was between 10 and 20 uh, millimeters. So as you can see, calcium silver aluminate cement uh, contains approximately 55% of calcium silver aluminate and it is uh, considered uh, into some extent as a um, uh, uh, friendly and eco-friendly uh, uh, binders. We can see also that the calcium silver aluminate cement is uh, uh, reported as a special cement with a lower uh, alkali content. Therefore, this uh, cement could result in reducing the degradation of natural fibers in the mortar composite. Um, so as for uh, the mixed design, it is produced according to uh, the European uh, standards uh, 1961. The incorporation of fibers consists of substituting a volume of sand by a corresponding volume of fiber with a constant total mass of fibers and sand of uh, 1350 grams. The fibers incorporation ratio varied from zero, that means uh, without uh, fibers, which is the, the control specimens, 1%, 2%, and 3% uh, expressed in a volume of mortar. With the, the use of two different types of cement and four replacement levels of fibers, we have made uh, eight mixtures. And uh, you can see in the, the table uh, the detail of the mix uh, design. As a result, uh, we are presenting here the mechanical uh, properties of the mortars at different uh, ages from 7 to uh, 28 days. Uh, as you can see, as fiber content increases, the flexural strength of mortars increased significantly, causing a decrease in compressive strength. 2% of coconut fiber content seems to be um, an optimum for improving the flexural strength of mortar. As uh, uh, you can see also from the results, whatever the age of mortar, um, toughness index that has been uh, uh, also calculated uh, the toughness index of control on 1% fiber reinforced mortar is always equal to 1. So, uh, what is the influence of fibers on early age behavior? So, this influence could be seen first from the slump flow results. 
uh, as you can see from this uh, figure, uh, the evolution of slump uh, flow of samples uh, at the fresh uh, state shows uh, a significant reduction in the slump flow with the introduction with the introduction uh, of fibers. This is uh, why we need the use of uh, some uh, plasticizer when using this kind of, uh, of fiber. And uh, uh, from uh, previous uh, results, we have um, uh, demonstrated that probably the high specific area of the fibers might be responsible of the slump flow decrease. So here we are presenting the influence of fibers on uh, the early age behavior, uh, taking into consideration the heat hydration uh, for the two types of cement. So first we can see that um, regarding this uh, heat of hydration, the four steps during the hydration time of motors, including the dormant uh, period, the hydration uh, acceleration and the hydration deceleration and the period of slow continuous uh, reaction can be uh, identified in accordance with the well-known hydration behavior. The presence of uh, fiber influences differently the heat uh, hydration development and behavior depending on the cement type and fiber content in mortar as we can see from uh, this uh, figure, the hydration process of the calcium sulfoaluminate sulfo cement based mortar presents a stable trend after uh, 12 hours, while those of uh, Portland cement based mortar demonstrate a significant uh, upward, uh, let's say. Uh, and uh, in the same period. This means that uh, calcium sulfoaluminate cement based mortar react more rapidly than uh, Portland cement based mortars and all the heat uh, of hydration uh, occur in 24 hours of hydration. A reasonable, uh, reasonable sorry, explanation uh, to this is that the element, that means C4A3S, as the dominant component of calcium uh, sulfoaluminate cement, is much more reactive than the other accessory uh, phases of and the uh, anhydrated phases. Therefore, rapid strength development is considered as uh, an uh, advantage of calcium sulfoaluminate cement based uh, composite. So I come now to the to the conclusions uh, to say that um, the calcium that the calcium sulfoaluminate uh, cement based mortar incorporating natural fibers such as coconut ones has a significant increase in flexure strength and a significant decrease in compressive strength of mortar. The second conclusion is about the addition of mortar in this, um, uh, in this kind of uh, composite material. It has a remarkable effects on the cracking behavior of mortar. Fibers act as a crack arrestor since the presence of fiber could uh, contribute to preventing a brittle behavior after the first crack appears. And finally, the, we have seen also that the enhancement of toughness and preventing development of cracks inside reinforced motors are the most important contribution uh, of fibers. And I come to the end of this uh, presentation and thank you very much for your uh, attention. Okay, uh, thank you for your uh, kind of attention. So, sorry, so the time is a little bit uh, over. So, uh, so far, I would like to close my 
this session. But today, uh, I, the Professor Katsumi delivers a comprehensive lecture on the Japanese status of construction waste management. And also uh, today, uh, four uh, presenters will make a presentation. The reason why I choose this presentation uh, is uh, I think the, there are three main issues to be, uh, three main important issues for the future perspectives. The one is uh, to exploring the new application in other fields, such as agriculture use or something uh, like presented by Dr. Ishimori. And second one is uh, introduce the innovative technology. And uh, this is a very common issue in the waste management. But today I talk about the example of the introduction of the AI and deep learning technology in the waste treatment. So introducing the new technology is another important issue. And the third one is uh, improving the qualities of uh, environmental performance of construction material by utilizing the potential properties and potential uh, properties of the waste material. This is so far the utilization itself is not objective. Maybe the improving the quality of the construction materials is uh, uh, maybe uh, promoting the actual promoting the actual recycling of the waste material in construction field. So anyway, uh, as I explained before, uh, this session uh, gives uh, uh, some achievement from the selected paper, the special issue of the journal of the material cycle of waste management. Sorry, uh, this uh, special issue, the schedule is really behind, but now we are working hard to publishing this special issue within this year. So when uh, we publish uh, this special issue, I hope that we uh, promote the uh, discussion and uh, uh, active the discussion among the uh, society of the of waste material and the construction waste material and the management field. Thank you for your atten today's uh, attention for the today's session. Thank you so much.